Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. Every year, pilgrims from around the world worship the risen Christ at his empty tomb in the city of Jerusalem. But did you know there are actually two tombs of Christ in the city? There is the one in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre where Catholics and Eastern Orthodox worship, but there is another one that is more popular among certain Protestants. So in today's episode, we'll find out why these Protestants prefer to worship the risen Jesus at that site and what the historical evidence really says about the location of Jesus' tomb. First, a little bit of backstory on the tomb of Christ at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. In AD 70, the city of Jerusalem was destroyed in the First Roman-Jewish War. About 60 years later, in the 2nd century, the Roman Emperor Hadrian built a colony called Aelia Capitolina over the city, and the site included a pagan temple that was constructed over the site where pilgrims had been traveling to venerate Christ's tomb. But instead of stopping devotion to Christ, the pagan temple had the unintended effect of marking the location of Christ's empty tomb for future believers. One of those believers was the Roman Emperor Constantine, a convert to Catholicism. Along with the support of his mother Helena, Constantine tore down the older pagan temple and replaced it with the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. This tradition was confirmed when workers uncovered in the foundations of the pagan temple stones that had Christian graffiti on them. One of the oldest, which is still in possession of the Armenian Orthodox Church, contains an ancient drawing of a boat with the words Domini Evimus, or Lord We Came. The church historian Eusebius, who lived around the same time as Constantine, provides a beautiful summary of what happened when the workers discovered Christ's tomb beneath the limestone of the pagan temple. As soon as the original surface of the ground, beneath the covering of earth, appeared immediately and contrary to all expectation, the venerable and hallowed monument of our Savior's resurrection was discovered. Then indeed this most holy cave present a faithful similitude of his return to life, in that after lying buried in darkness, it again emerged to light and afforded to all who came to witness the sight a clear and visible proof of the wonders of which that spot had once been the scene, a testimony to the resurrection of the Savior clearer than any voice could give. Some skeptics in the modern period doubted the Church of the Holy Sepulchre actually contained Christ's tomb or the remains of Calvary, because the Holy Sepulchre is located within the walls of Old Jerusalem. However, the Gospels say Jesus was taken outside the city, and Hebrews 13.12 says that Jesus suffered outside the gate, or the entrance to Jerusalem. Thus, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which is located within the walls of Jerusalem, could not be the site of Christ's tomb, according to these modern skeptics. So this motivated 19th century scholars like Charles Gordon to claim that a rocky formation north of Jerusalem's Damascus Gate was probably the true site of Calvary. The area contained several tombs, and its main rock formation did look like a skull, which matches the Gospel's description of the area being called Golgotha, the place of the skull. Researchers also found what appeared to be relics of a cistern and other elements of a garden, which would corroborate St. John's description of Jesus' tomb lying within a garden. There was also a desire among Protestant scholars to promote a site to worship the risen Christ that was free of Catholic and Orthodox influences. The Protestant travel writer George Sandus wrote in the 17th century about the Orthodox Holy Fire celebration at Jesus' tomb, describing it as savage clamors, frantic behaviors of people thrusting the flame amongst their clothes and into their bosoms, but swiftly withdrawing it, persuading strangers that it will not burn them. He said these practices were befitting better the solemnities of Bacchus than the worship of Christ. If you want a solid treatment of the alleged miracle of the Eastern Orthodox Holy Fire at Jesus' tomb, check out the link in the description below to Jimmy Akin's recent Mysterious World episode on the subject. And if you want to help our channel burn up the YouTube algorithm, definitely hit the subscribe button and like this video. So it's no coincidence that Protestant scholars promoted a new location for Jesus' burial. Charles Gordon said, It is very nice to see it so plain and simple, instead of having a huge church built on it. I do not care for the sites. I like the temple, Wailing Place, my Golgotha, the Mount of Olives, and the Valley of Kidron. I like the places, not the sites. Over the decades, the garden tomb became a place where Protestants could honor Christ's resurrection, but not be in the presence of Catholic elements of worship, like altars, incense, oil lamps, chanting, and the celebration of Mass. But the Protestants who promoted the garden tomb didn't give up only Catholic elements of worship. 
they gave up a solid historical connection to the Lord's death and resurrection. The custodians of the garden tomb seem to admit this because its website says, the question as to whether this is the same tomb in which the Messiah was buried is ultimately unimportant. What is important is that visitors to this garden have an encounter with the living Messiah today. But for pilgrims who make significant investments to travel across the world to follow in Jesus' footsteps, it is important. They should be able to know if Jesus ever set foot in a certain place, or if events attributed to him, especially one as central to Christianity as the resurrection, actually took place there. In 1986, Israeli archaeologist Gabriel Barkay published an article that showed, among other things, that the garden tomb was carved seven or eight centuries before Christ was born. However, the Bible says Jesus' tomb was a brand new one that had been built for Joseph of Arimathea. Other parts of the area, like the cistern for the garden, have been dated to the time of the Crusades. Moreover, the skull-like appearance in the rocks has noticeably eroded since its discovery in the 19th century. So there's reason to doubt this feature was present 2,000 years ago for it to be called Golgotha. The garden tomb's location in relation to the walls of Jerusalem also does not give it more authenticity. It is true that the garden tomb is located outside the walls of the modern old city of Jerusalem, but those walls were built during the Ottoman Empire. The walls of first century Jerusalem were closer to the site of the Jewish temple. Archaeologists have shown that the Church of the Holy Sepulchre lies outside the ancient first century walls of Jerusalem, corresponding to exactly what the Bible says about Jesus being crucified outside the gates of the city. So as we continue into the Easter season, let's rejoice in the empty tomb of Christ and in God's providence, in spite of secular powers like the Roman emperor's attempts to stamp out the faith, God used the actions of men to preserve the location of Christ's greatest miracle that saves us from eternal death. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a very blessed day and a very blessed Easter.